My name is Lila C. Matthew Daniel and I never realized I was going to do this kind of tribute for Uwong King. But then God proposes, you know, man disposes. We just have to give God all the glory and just, you know, accept that which has been brought onto us. Um, I'm going to speak from the heart. I met Bubon King about four years ago. He zoomed into my life. We were at a program and he decided that he was going to adopt me as his mother and my four uh, adult girls, my women. And from that day, he's given me <clears throat> all the respect that is given to a mother. I mean, he was larger than life. He had a big heart. He had a huge heart. He was a man on assignment, but we didn't know. He was moving very fast. I remember when the first Tinkaton came on, and I said to myself, mm, well, I don't know. Will this really take off? And right in front of us, it just gathered momentum. Because the youth were looking for someone they could identify with someone that could be a mentor, someone that could be a realistic yardstick for them. And they found this in Ubon King. He was honest from right inside out. He never lied about his humble backgrounds. And that was an identifying factor for them to know that no matter where you're coming from, you have to create that fire inside of you. You have to dare to live. You have to dare to want to make those dreams that come to you come to pass. You don't need to look for anybody or begin to have a pity party with yourself. I wish my father was a billionaire. I wish my mother was a billionaire. My uncle was a billionaire. Well, they're not. So what are you going to do about it? If you hear the stories of those that actually created the wealth that some people are enjoying right now, not the ones that it's um, questionable, you will see that they too came from humble beginnings. They started off and this is what he gave them. And he was a man who was always searching for knowledge, you know, searching for knowledge to make himself better so that he can give more. It was a loving father, that one, not to be disputed, a loving husband. He poured himself into Ivy. How did we know that he was going to go and leave so much responsibility for her? But then God is going to uplift them. In fact, he's uplifting them. The children are already exhibiting, you know, values and morals that will take them far, that will make them... Uh, 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 um, a point of contact too, you understand? Because Ubong has left a legacy. He has left a larger than life situation all over. And IV God will empower you to carry the mantle, to push this legacy forward because your first legacy are the children. And I know you can do it. You know, Ubong will just call me from anywhere. Mommy, are you home? As soon as he said that, I know it was him. I said, yes, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working, but come on over. And if he has been gone for a long time, he'll appear with uh, um, uh, uh, fruits and say, this is my uh, uh, sorry situation. And then every Christmas, he will send me a goat. How can you imagine a goat, live goat, not chopped or anything, not killed or anything? And I say to him, who's going to do this for me? He says, mommy, you, you don't worry, we'll arrange it, but you know, this is what that has to be done. I told him once, I said, okay, why don't you kill it? And just, he says, no, 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 the goat has to arrive, you know, alive. And that is how it's done. I said, no, I'm not a village woman. He said, no, 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 no. That is how it's done. And that is it. That is how it's done. And he will convince you that is how it is done. My last 
real contact with him, apart from the phone, was when he arrived. He said, where, 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 where are you? I said, I'm at my desk. He said, I'm coming, I'm coming. My head is scattered. My head is scattered. I thought to myself, scattered again. What is wrong with him? So he came, he said, I have so many things. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to do. You understand? And I said to him, okay, come on over. Let's see what's going on. And it was a case of he needed to identify some things that were going on in his mind. So I told him, I said, okay, what we're going to do is I can't hold a vision board uh, consultation with you. I'm not prepared, but we're going to do it all the same. I mean, I'm, I'm a whiz at this thing. So I gave him a paper. I said, okay, all the things that are going on in your head, write them down. All the things that you want to do, you've done and still want to do, write them down. And lo and behold, he was writing. We got to 10, 11, 12. I was sitting down there watching him. 15, 20. In my mind, I was saying to myself, oh my goodness. No wonder he's so, um, you know, blocked up there. 30, 35. Then he started slowing down. 37, 38, 39. He stopped. He said, this is all. And I saw a whole paper filled with, he was writing, writing, writing. I gave him, you know, a, a big sheet of paper. The sheet that I use for vision boarding. So I, I looked at it and immediately I saw that, you know, they were just broken down items, but there were only five. Five, you know, headings. I could see it all. So I said, you know, Bob, you only have five you know, focal topics here. But what you've done is you've jumbled everything together. So I want you to sit down again. Next step, look at them critically and begin to identify those that are common, those that are similar, everything. And he sat down there. I had some crayons from my uh, grandchildren. They came the weekend before, so we used that. Use yellow for this, use yellow for the second one or whatever, just use it. And as we sat down there, he identified the common areas, those that are similar, those that seem to be the same. And guess what? He came to five. And he sat back and he said, Mommy, ha, no wonder, no wonder I am so confused. So I said, that's what we're going to do. The reds, take all the reds on one part, take all the blues on one side, take all the this, and then we'll identify which is the most important, which is the key that will drop down to the rest. And that was it. And he went, ah, my head is free. Who's going to come and worry me like that anymore? Well, I'm so glad I met him. I'm so glad he called me mother. And I know that wherever he is, he's smiling down at us today. God bless you, Ivy. God bless your children. Don't worry. You'll be okay. He's watching over you and God ultimately is watching over you. I'm so happy to give this tribute. And the young ones listening to um, this program today, he deposited things into you. And for those who don't know him, go on to YouTube. Listen to him. Listen to all the things that he said because it came from his belly. And out of the belly, him rivers of living water to mentor you, to coach you, to assist you to get to where you are supposed to get to.